Hello. Recently, I repaired this beautiful Super Beta High Band NTSC uh, SL HF900 uh, Beta Max video recorder. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of kit, and I'm really looking forward to getting this set up in, the work, in my studio. It's presently in my workshop, connected to a transformer. And the reason I'm having a bit of trouble powering this thing is because this is the Japanese version of this machine. And I found that it cannot be altered to UK or even USA mains voltages. It's stuck at 100 volts AC. Connecting this via one of the transformers I have for 110 volts is going to shorten its life. So that won't do. Uh, now, it's only got a two pin plug on the end, doesn't need three pin connection. Uh, I've been looking at who could supply a transformer for this, and there's really only one manufacturer uh, in the UK of high quality transformers, a company called Airlink, uh, who make both isolated and auto transformer type uh, transformers, which will provide 100 volts. And I'll talk a little bit about the difference later. However, you pay for quality, and they're not the cheapest thing in the world. Uh, so even a, a, a base model one is going to cost like uh, £130 by the time you've got the VAT and post and everything on it. But I can't carry on using this wholly unsatisfactory arrangement here, using uh, the transformer with multiple tappings that I have in my uh, workshop. On this thing, I'd set it up with uh, 123 volt winding, and then put a 20 volt winding in antiphase to take 20 volts off to give us about 100 volts which we can see from the meter it does. So am I really going to have to bite the bullet and order in one of those really expensive Airlink transformers or might there be another solution? Special delivery! Oh thank you, wonder what's in this. This has been donated by David Gillard who was the very same very generous person who donated the SLHF 900 video recorder to me. So this transformer and that video recorder may have been used together before. So we have a very substantial uh, three-pin mains plug, and it is Airlink Transformer JA500, so 500 VA rating. Now it says on the back of the video recorder that it's 50 watts, and the internal transformer is, I think, 52 VA. So this is massive overkill, which uh, is better that way than uh, the other way. You can see through the vents the toroidal transformer inside. What it lacks is a power switch, which might have been a nice thing to include, and maybe I could add one. Uh, if there's room at the front, I could add a, a mains input switch. I wonder why they chose not to do that. Now, this is a, a three-terminal outlet here. Uh, I wonder if this is an isolation transformer or if it's uh, an auto-transformer. I suspect it's auto-transformer. Let's do some measurements and find out. So what's the difference, you ask? Well, an isolation transformer has two completely separate windings. The input and output windings are not connected. If this is an is if this is a uh, auto transformer type, then the almost half of the winding that is the output winding is shared with the input, which reduces weight and cost, but means you don't have any electrical isolation. You might say, well, why would you need electrical isolations? It's mains, it's mains. And there is some truth to that, but I'll show you with a little diagram later why an isolation transformer could in some cases be uh, a safer choice. Right, let's start by just having a look to see if there's any electrical connection between any of the input and output terminals. Well, we'll start with there should be a connection for earth. Good start. So we're going to look for a neutral connection. Aha. Yes, there is. Everything will feel like a short circuit with such big windings. But if we look on the neutral connection and this side of the outlet, we're seeing a fraction of an ohm. So neutral is shared. But the live connection will have many ohms, or some ohms. OK, a few ohms due to the extra windings. Now, under what circumstances may that not be the ideal solution? Well, there is some argument that noise can travel through this more than would happen with uh, an isolation transformer. But remember, we have an isolation transformer in the video recorder. 
So I'm not too worried about that. But if you had a, a system that would, was a chopper supply on the output side, then the noise could be an issue. Also, if there was a failure within the transformer, uh, you could potentially get a situation where a very high voltage was applied to the output. It's extremely unlikely, not really a consideration, but possibly some sort of short could happen in a transformer which would result in uh, the output being connected to uh, a much closer to live connection on the input. But my concern with a auto transformer is if you use all three terminals, which our video recorder won't, so we don't need to worry. Let me show you. This is our mains lead, and it will fit there, and it's not keyweighed, so there's no, it's not sensitive to the uh, polarity. And it doesn't mind because this is going straight into a transformer, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes. There's no safety implications. But let me show you where there could be. So let's go through the diagrams a little bit. An isolation transformer would have a winding for the input and a winding for the output and maybe an earth and 230 volts there, and 100 volts there. OK. A auto transformer, which is the type we have, will have a different kind of transformer where you still have the earth. Now neutral shares some windings with the input and output. So this is 230 volts and this is 110 volts, or 100 volts in this case. Right, so the common is the neutral connection. This is not just like it's a dropper resistor here. You know, this is a transformer. Uh, it's a, a very large inductor and we are not just uh, resistively losing voltage here. It's, it uses the same magnetic principles as this transformer. But let's look at this situation in the very unfortunate situation where your house wiring or mains cable or something is badly made. So we have the same input and output, but there's a defect that your house wiring is back to front. Now the live on the input is connected to what was the neutral on the output. So these are now swapped. And you might still say that doesn't really matter, does it? You know, so what? Well, the voltage between neutral and earth here is negligible okay very approximately zero volts but now the voltage between what was a neutral connection and earth is now 230 volts ac if this is going straight into a transformer it still won't matter in our case it won't matter we're not using earth but suppose we had a an appliance that does have earth so this was supposed to be the neutral connection and this was supposed to be the live connection, and these are neutral and live outputs. Now, in our bad condition, these are now swapped. And in our piece of equipment, we have a, a filter, an RFI filter. And these are capacitors here. Now, our earth condition now, here, has 230 volts AC across this capacitor. But this was a piece of equipment that was originally designed to work on 100 volts or 110 volts. And so very likely that filter capacitor is only rated at maybe 120 volts AC or similar. 
and it's now got UK mains across it. And it's going to protest with a large cloud of smoke and potentially hotness. You could have a fire. You could have a dangerous situation here with this capacitor that's being overloaded. So that's why I think a three terminal output on one of these, um, which will then feed something like, like a, a professional video recorder, some professional equipment, which has mains filtering like this. There is a hazard. This is a nice quality mains cable, but if that's plugged into something less high quality and these terminals have been swapped, nobody would necessarily notice. All the other appliances on this equipment is working just fine. You plug this in and you could have potentially uh, a big bang. So uh, that's why I think isolation transformers are a good idea. Now this is model JA500. Uh, they do uh, on Airlink Transformers website JA250 and that comes in two variants. The same type of transformer as this, an auto transformer, but they also do a dash ISO version which costs more. The 250 watt, uh, VA version which is isolated costs as much as this 500 VA auto transformer type so you do pay for the isolation but uh, if I was buying one outright myself I would be looking at the isolation type just in case I ever plug it into anything else beyond this video recorder which is safe anyway it has an input transformer but if I was plugging it in potentially into some other Japanese equipment that has a three terminal cable perhaps this goes to an IEC connector and then that has a filter in it, just in case uh, there was some horrible wiring in your house, I think I'd rather in that case uh, be using an isolation transformer. Right, let's plug this into some more mains and confirm that my video recorder is happy. Okay, I've plugged that in. I just got a main shock. Ow, I didn't enjoy that. What happened? I touched the metal case on that. I'm a little bit nervous now. What do you suppose happened there? I just touched the metal case of this and got a shock when holding the video recorder. What was the problem, do you think? I'm pretty sure that is earthed. So the problem must be some leakage path through the transformer and onto the video recorder. This video is not going as I planned. So I'm wondering, what was the uh, mechanism by which I got a belt then? Well, if there's some leakage inside this machine, the super beater, then I would feel a, a jolt as I touched this metal earthed case. So uh, let's look for any kind of conduction path there between the mains lead on this so I'll go across both terminals and the metal case nothing right but if I put my fingers across there yep I'm measuring resistance so the problem would not appear to be the video recorder unless it breaks down under voltage. 100 volts, not that likely. What other mechanism could there be? Well, maybe this wasn't being held at earth. Maybe there's an electrical fault. So I have one of these cheap testers, but it's just got two neons and it will tell you if they don't both light up, there's a fault. So let's plug this into my mains distribution unit that I was using to connect this up and confirm that both lights come on. Oh, that's not right, is it? We have a fault. My notes here say that uh, if just that light comes on, then either live and neutral are swapped or earth is disconnected. Oh dear. So we have a potential fault on the electrical system in my, in my workshop. Well, it's only a cheap, simple little test of this thing, but it correctly identified there's been an earthing fault. And it transpires that some of the sockets 
in part of the house have got an intermittent earth so uh, we're going to have to call in the electrician who was involved with the extension some months ago and find out what's happened to our earthing but at least that means there's nothing wrong with the transformer and the earthing's good downstairs in the studio so uh, let's go down and give it a go right so we've got it set up now you can see our VU meters are still slightly adrift but can't do much about that there it is on the 100 volt transformer next to it's a cheaper 110 volt transformer it's feeding out to this monitor actually via a digital time based corrector and also there's some video capture equipment below it is the SL HF600 which we repaired a few months ago so we uh, have two Super Beta NTSC machines there so there's our VU meters uh, what else? Oh, a Sanyo VTC 5550 PAL and CCAM machine. Uh, we have the SLT50 multi standard. Not sure I'm going to need that terribly much, but it's still there and set up. And we have a pure NTSC Sanyo machine as well. And then as a result of having done all that work in the studio, uh, I have pulled this one out. It's SLT30ME, which I actually don't need anymore. I might keep it, but if somebody makes me an offer I can't refuse, I might sell it because uh, I probably don't need yet another NTSC and CCAM player. Right, I hope you've enjoyed us uh, playing with the uh, equipment with beta machines and that transformer uh, and maybe learned a little bit and uh, I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.